My talk today is about technology in the diamond industry. It's a pretty broad topic. So I'm gonna to focus today on the hot buttons. In my eyes, this is the impact of blockchain in the diamond industry. De Beers have a program known as Tracer, but in this presentation, because time is limited, I'll be focusing on the introduction of the Diamond Journey by Serin and the GIA origin reports. You know, it's very easy to make promises, but you have to be able to back it up in a world where within two clicks on your mobile, you could find any answer to almost anything. Introducing blockchain and highly, or should I say other highly respected technologies means that you're separating the difference between declarative information and verifiable information. It's not enough just to declare the diamond is ethically sourced. You have to have tangible evidence to prove it. To do this topic justice, I need to reach out to those who were not only in the know, but who were responsible for that technology. And I had to get their perspectives on how the industry and the consumer see it. I was fortunate enough to reach out to David Block, who is the CEO of Serin Technology, and Pratesh Patel, who is the COO of GIA, to provide me with some video content to explain better the two stories of the Diamond Journey and the GIA Origin Report, and to really understand what they mean. In addition, I decided to look for two very different perspectives and see how they sit side to side. So to begin with, I'm gonna start with a little video that I think is really well done by Serin, and it just puts in perspective how technology is being used today to cut diamonds anywhere in the world by the majority of manufacturers. Although I've seen it in person, it still never ceases to amaze me how far we've come in our industry from marking a diamond with a black pen on a stone and using hammers and knives which resemble stonemason stools to green lasers and laser plotting and being able to maximize the yield of every diamond crystal. It's an incredible journey that the diamond takes, no doubt. But if we're gonna talk about blockchain on diamonds, then the world authority in this space is a great colleague of mine and one of the world leaders in a number of blockchain industries, Leanne Kemp. Leanne is CEO of Everledger. She's an Aussie from Queensland. But for those of you who don't know, she's a woman who was asked to speak at the World Economic Forum in Davos in Switzerland. That's right. In addition, Leanne was appointed Queensland's chief entrepreneur to develop the state's startup ecosystem. And in 2018, she was named as one of the top women, the 50 top women in technology by Forbes magazine. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna watch a little promo by GA to explain their origin report. And then we're gonna watch one on Everledger to understand how they see themselves fitting into this equation. And then we're gonna have a face-to-face -face with Leanne and hear her perspective. A billion years in the making. When you know your diamond's origin, you understand the impact it has had on the places it has passed through and the lives of those who've labored to bring you its beauty. Ethically sourced diamonds sustain communities around the globe, allowing you to wear these beautiful gems with confidence and pride. GIA, the world's foremost authority in gemological research, education, and analysis, is the globally recognized leader in diamond grading. Our Diamond Origins service uses GIA's proprietary, science-based process to match the polished gemstone to its original rough diamond, confirming the diamond's geographic origin. By analyzing the rough diamond, GIA gains vital information that is then compared to the polished gemstone, confirming country of origin. Every diamond origin report includes GIA's independent grading assessment to verify gem quality. Your diamond's fascinating journey is available to view and share through the GIA origin app or website. From deep within the earth, through the hands of artisans, to the final jeweled piece, every diamond has a story to tell. Know where your diamond comes from. Every object has a good story to tell, but how do you turn that good story into good business? Welcome to the Everledger platform. 
Using blockchain and IoT technology, we shine a light on all the unique steps that make your product your product. Its origins, its journey, the reasons to love it. Everledger helps everyone to trust what they buy. Our secure platform unboxes the lifetime story of any product, from diamonds to clothes to wine bottles and electric vehicle batteries to grow sales and protect your brand against counterfeiting. You can generate new demand from like-minded suppliers and buyers, showcase your sustainability record, and make claims with backed up evidence about the reasons to love your product, and invite partners and customers to tap into your world. Fully customizable, secure by blockchain technology and faster than ever, make transparency a good story for your business. Some very cool images there from GIA. And the great thing about it is having been fortunate enough to actually visit South Africa, I can tell you that those images of what they do with the land and the community are real. It's not just a pretty picture. But putting that aside, now let's hear Leanne's views on the impact she thinks blockchain will have on diamond sales and how will it impact the diamond retailer? So I'm fortunate enough to be interviewing not only a brilliant futurist and someone who makes things happen, but a good friend of mine as well, Leanne Kemp. Hi, Remy. Good to be connected today. Absolutely, absolutely. So what? why I have such um, admiration for Leanne is because Leanne is the CEO of Everledger, and Everledger is a company which is leading the world in blockchain technology. And although a lot of it started in the space of diamonds and still works heavily in the diamond community, blockchaining the origin and journey stories, but also in a number of other industries uh, that we see involved in uh, rare earth, wool, alcohol, fashion, all sorts of things. And Leanne doesn't only have a vision of what's possible, but she implements and she executes. And that's why her company is seen as such a leader and working with the largest diamond tiers in the world. And in particular, obviously with the GIA for a number of years. So I really appreciate your time. This is going to be a really short one, Leanne, because in this conversation that um, I want to have with you, it's specifically for the jewelry industry summit. And my topic is about technology in the diamond industry. So my question to you is, and I'm going to start off with a bit of a statement. You know, blockchain made a lot of noise when it was first announced. Um, and then things went a bit quiet. You know, we heard cryptocurrency, but we know crypto is not blockchain. Two separate things. So we're good with that. But it's, it's really still early days when it comes to blockchain. So my question to you is, how big an impact do you think blockchain is going to have on diamond sales? So that's one question. And how could a diamond retailer who is at the consumer's call face, really at the call face, measure its importance or impact? So the answer to that question lies at the fundamentals of um, how do you think the internet has changed or impacted industries around the world? If we had the ability to look back through the rear vision mirror, um, what, we, what could we say where value was created from the internet as we know it in our industry? The same too is about to occur with blockchain. We're moving from what we once knew was the World Wide Web to the World Wide Ledger, enabling trust over the internet in ways that have never been seen before. Consumers, of course, are in a curious set of mind and activations where they're asking different questions of retailers in our industry to give us more, to give us more of the story, to answer questions in ways that we can um, enable the trust and truth to be told through systems and technology. And I guess we could probably say we're in the middle of a trust lust right now. Um, it, the romantic nature of diamonds and the promise that is being bared across industry is now needing to be coupled with technologies of trust. And blockchain, of course, is that underlying foundation. So, the retailers and the relationship that we hold with consumers is critically important. And it's a very personalized relationship. Um, Correct. 
being able to bring the trusted mechanisms of trade, which of course we know have existed for many generations and arguably has been woven globally across the web with 80 odd countries as a part of the Kimberley process, is now being shown to consumers in a way that yes, we can tell the story about those relationships and those trusted gentlemen's handshakes that have existed in industry for many years, but consumers are curious about where the diamond has come from. And we can substantiate that through technologies, many technologies, but blockchain, of course, is that connective layer to bring together each of the data points, but also the existing technologies in industry can be coordinated um, through blockchain technology. Can I ask you a question, Leanne? Do you think that someone would pay more for a diamond because it's blockchain enabled and connected? We posed that question to ourselves in 2015 when we began, and it was a hypothesis that we assumed that may uh, actually ring true. And given that we're six years in the making with retailers connected to the blockchain, as well as some of the largest diamond manufacturers, we certainly know that consumers are interested in understanding the origin of the diamond, that there is a correlation between the purchasing decision and the emotional attachment or the truth of what's being told around the diamond story and customers therefore um, have uh, shown the trust and the truth with uh, with their wallet. We know consumers are willing to pay more because they're embedding the truth of that journey with the diamond in alignment to their own core values as a human. So how do we bring the value creation of industry closer to the values alignment of our consumer or our industry at whole? But and that does that, sorry happening. interrupting, but does that convert to, to dollars? Well, it certainly does convert to dollars. Otherwise, Everledger wouldn't be afforded uh, the opportunity to still be alive as an organization. You know, there's an economics at play here. If we can move the diamonds faster because purchases um, are able to be aligned with the trust and the mechanism that consumers will make a top of mind choice um, faster or more predominantly with diamonds that are telling the wholeness of story, then that plays well for diamond manufacturers, particularly with stock that's sitting in consignment or APRO. Consumers are definitely um, showing signs of paying more for the diamonds. Um, and thirdly, consumers are also wanting to understand not only the story of the diamond of where it's come from, but also the journey and the intersection point of how we safely store it in a vault, in not just only a physical vault, but a digital vault. And when you know, Rami, more than anyone, the importance in the timing of that information um, in the darkest days when something tragic happens and we call upon the promise to pay, which is insurance. Yeah, 100%. Right. That's Okay, so that's really interesting. And I posed that question about will they pay more because I did speak to um, one of the, one of, one of the, manufacturers who uses blockchain and they weren't sure um you know they they do the diamond journey they said it's still a very competitive um market and they can't quite charge a premium for it um but that's at their end not so much necessarily the the retail end and i actually it's interesting i liken it to I liken it to to the fact that there's some technology that is is arriving, and you have to take it on. And not to get on that train um, means you will lose the sale. It's like you don't you're not going to have a choice in time. So better get on now. Start to learn how to use it. Make use of that that very concept to tell a better story. And the example is, if we want to make it most simplistic. If you don't use, you know, a digital receipt today, you know, what are you doing? You're going to handwrite your receipts in your business or, you know, take China. If you're not using Alipay or, 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 or we pay, how could you even do business? So it's not really a matter of, are you making money on it per se or making more money? You, it's a must, must be a must have in the bigger picture. These technology breakthroughs are sometimes seen as a paradox where a thing or a combination contradicts each other's in features and qualities. 
And I guess once we sort of look at the combination of blockchain and the dynamics across the industry, it is um, a, a fundamental shift in how we're enabling value and the preserver preservation of value. So we're starting to see this, however, being signaled in industries well beyond the diamond industry. That's why we know that the fundamental secrets lie in historical meaning of technology. The evolution of the internet, what did it do and how did it give birth to a series of e-commerce enablement trades? And when was the right time for industries as a whole or companies within industries make that adoption of these fundamental technologies that are here to stay? The internet is not going away anywhere. Therefore, the next generation of the internet needs to enable trustful mechanisms, enable better transparency, and give the decision-making power to the people. And this is a people's technology. Yeah. It's born to be a people's technology. So hence why the combination of our industry-led values and value creation is critical in understanding how this can actually break through. Can you, I know I wasn't planning to talk about this, but now that I've got you here, I cannot not ask you this. Can you explain a bit better? I was reading an article you were interviewed about your interpretation of the next stage to KYC. So there's the KYC, which is know your customer. And we all know that if you want to buy anything overseas, you know, if you want to buy a dime from Australia to India or anywhere, Antwerp, you have to fill out one of these KYC documents. It's like part of the course. But you introduced another idea that I, and I didn't, I want to know more about it. And that is KYO or KYO. Yes, correct. Am I right? Correct. correct. Know your object. When we think about KYC was a construct that was brought together by financial services and looked at anti-money laundering and how we could identify the actors uh, within a transaction. Um, underlying uh, the principles of that, of course, is the object itself. And given that we're in uh, an interesting, yet again, another paradox around climate and environment and sustainability, um, it's of course the questions are going to be asked about the object and the capturing uh, of that journey is more important to financial services when we understand the transactions that have occurred around it rather than just the story of the object itself. So bringing more data at an object level is critically important. We'll see uh, 5G being born across many corners of the globe. And when we can combine 5G, the telecommunications network with satellite imagery, those coupled together as a data backbone of communications, then KYO, know your object, will become the new normal in so much that you will see if you have a diamond on a carrier that's in the lux cargo of the plane, you'll know where it is and it's time to destination. Same wow. too when we're looking at shipping containers um, and its expected delivery pathways and, pa and passages. So we're getting this connection happening in various levels, but it will solidly come together um, as the new rails of global trade. Fabulous. Leanne, thanks for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Brilliant. Anytime. Anytime, Rami. It's like talking to a mate. So some of you may not have seen what the Sorin journey really is or it looks like. So I'm gonna share with you a video that David sent me, which really lets you appreciate all the steps that are happening here and where that whole verification blockchain fits in. And then we're gonna to speak to an Australian diamond retailer who uses this technology every day in his operation. Serene diamond journey traceability begins at the mine. All rough stones in a given package are scanned by the producer and a unique 3D model is generated for each stone. The producer completes the registration by adding important data, then uploads everything to the Serene Secure Cloud-based system. Serene Diamond Journey traceability continues at the factory. Each stone in the package is scanned by the manufacturer, who inputs the package ID and producer name into the system. A unique verification algorithm matches the rough stones in the package to what was registered by the producer. If the match is positive, the stone is registered with its new owner. Serene Diamond Journey traceability ensures validation throughout all stages of the diamond manufacturing process. Every time a stone is processed through a stage, 
The system validates its current status to assure it is the same stone, then registers the new stage automatically. This allows for continuous matching and validation from planned stage through sawing until the polished stone. The process is seamlessly integrated into existing workflows, resulting in no interruptions nor extra cost. When the polished plan is finalized, the system captures multiple properties of the rough part and the planned polish to enable matching to the final polished stone. Once polishing is complete, the polished stone is matched against the final plan for validation. Serene Diamond Journey Traceability now accompanies the polished stone to Serene's AI lab. The polish validation stage verifies the stone by matching its different properties, such as inclusions, polish proportions, and additional unique features, to the properties registered during the final plan stage. This will verify the polished stone is derived from a specific rough. After moving through mine, manufacturer, and lab, Serene Diamond Journey Traceability is completed with the generation of a customizable digital or printed report supporting the retailer's brand and providing consumers with a record of their diamond's journey, from its birth as a rough stone to the beautiful polished diamond. Serene's True Match is a solution that connects between the physical diamond and its digital report, using unique diamond fingerprinting technology to load the diamond's report online. Combining the diamond journey with TrueMatch, retailers can now offer consumers real-time validation of their polished diamond in the store at the point of purchase. So now, I have the pleasure of introducing you to someone who's at the coalface of retail jewelry. He's worked with Serene for the last three years. He's based in Melbourne CBD. He is a highly successful diamond engaging retailer. Let's listen to Tim. So this morning, I have the pleasure of speaking to Tim Sung, who's the CEO of Janai. It's a jewelry store in Melbourne, in Victoria, Australia, for those who are watching from overseas. And Tim has developed a very successful diamond engagement ring business. And the reason why we're talking to Tim is, apart from being successful, he's an early adopter of technology. He's someone that I've watched go out there and look at what is the latest, what is the greatest, and prepare to take a chance. Because we all know that to bring in technology into your business is a change of behavior. And you might like it, but you have to teach your whole team to like it. And everyone has their pat on how they sell. And now we're asking them to bring in this new tech. So Tim, I wanna ask you just a few questions if you can help me out. So being an early adopter of technology, do you see the blockchain technology and you know the origin story that we hear about all the time as something that will be essential to selling a diamond in the future. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely, Rami. Um, I see a lot of uh, consumers who actually um, wants to know uh, where where the diamonds from. Um, you know, because um, there's a lot of uh, the public has been criticizing. Uh, buying a diamond, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not a, the best thing. You should use other options. How do you know it's ethical uh, and such? So this uh, blockchain technology actually helps, um, you know, uh, building the trust. in the So let me ask you a question because yeah. I've had other retailers sort of think, oh, it's still early days. I mean, is this like, you know, we often talk about the 80-20 rule. Is this like 20% of customers are interested, but 80 still don't really know or don't care? Um, a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of men out there who see the value, um, you know, where where the diamonds from with this technology. Uh, but there's a lot of the, the females I uh, see, you know, they all just want to see how beautiful uh, the stone is, like how sparkles they are. But the the males out of the they, they love they love it they love where the diamonds from. Can you can you give me a, a little bit of an example just when we talk about the journey? So what is the journey actually showing us in simple terms? The journey is showing us where it's, um, it's from. Like it's, it's actually a proof your diamond is natural. That's number one. Um, so we know the country that it came from? Uh, yeah, Ab absolutely. Do, do, do we know the mine that it came from or not yet? Just the country? Um, the, the country, yes. It depends where, uh, which company the actual factory purchased the stone from. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for example, if they get it from Rio Tinto or Dominion, we know it's from Canada. But right. if you get it from Arosa, we know it's from Russia. Uh, okay. The only um, a company that's not really um, giving us that access yet is uh, we just know it's, it's from the Trade Center, which is which is in Botswana. But it's and which country? Which company is that? Uh, De Beers. Right. So and that's because De Beers will amalgamate stones from a variety of countries. Correct. Yes. So. Okay. Yeah, so the beer stone is mostly um, we know is either from Botswana, South Africa, Namibia, uh, and Canada. Right, but we don't. But the other places, you know, country, you'll know, and in some cases, even mines. Correct. Okay, so so that data is entered into a blockchain. Um, from there, do we? It goes into a factory, and. What do we know about what happens in the factory? How do we know the stone doesn't get lost and, and things like that? You know, like, where is the proof? Yeah, look, um, uh, there's a lot of complication in there. And I know there's a lot of factory trying to apply uh, the Sarin technology um, into the factory. But there's only a few of them that are actually um, uh, ready. And I know it's, it's, it's a lot of work for them um, to, to apply that technology. Because and are they every- able to track it like... Proven all the way? 100%. They, sh- they should be. 100% they should be. Um, and every diamond is touched by, um, for example, Sarin technology. And what I mean by touch is, you know, they, they, this being scanned, the, the rough has been scanned. So they do the actual planning um, on how they're going to cut the stone. So from there, they actually uh, document it as well. So when you say every diamond, I mean, well, worldwide, every diamond is touched by Sarin? I think that there's one or two other companies, or are they the predominant player? Uh, they're, they're dominant player, so, uh, Sarin, I would say. Um, right. Or maybe there's there's another company that I don't know of, but I'm I'm just really. I, I'd agree with you. Yeah. I think Sarin, to my knowledge, probably has 80% of the market. That it's all the original planning is done with Sarin, and, and moving it along. Okay. Correct. Tell me, tell me, Tim, what is the tech? I mean, we're both clearly we both understand that. Blockchain is, is a long-term story. And, you know, is it, is it though the tech of blockchain that's exciting? You said men really like it. Or is it just the knowledge that this comes with a dime journey? Like, is it enough to just show them a certificate and say, I can tell you? Or do they actually want to know more? They want to see more? Um, I've been working with Sarin for, I would say, three years now. Um, it just through my experience. When I'm you know, when I'm selling the product, um, there are more men who are interested in, wow, you know, it's amazing. You know where it's from. I love that. But most of the time, the, the females, they love just the beauty of the design of the ring or how beautiful the diamond is, how sparkles they are. Uh, that's why we uh, also use Sarin, a lot performance uh, technology. So, Can you explain that a little bit, like performance? Because that's, that's almost like your fifth C, right? I mean, yeah, it, you um, know, it, it's a new, new concept. That, sorry for interrupting you, but I mean, the whole concept of like performance, we, we like, you know, we've always for a long time been talking about hearts and arrows. And, you know, there's a few retailers who will talk about, you know, specific like performance. But, but Serena is actually taken to a, a totally different technical level, correct? Because they correct. can demonstrate. Yeah. The, the scintillation? Is it scintillation? Um, or, or that's a different look, thing altogether? Uh, Sarin use different languages. Um, mm-hmm. To me, that's uh, an older way. Um, you know, there's a lot of different theories that I do respect as well. Uh, but I do love about Sarin because they uh, separate um, sparkles, uh, fire, uh, brilliance, and the light symmetry. So when people talk about hearts and arrows, they're talking about the light symmetry. You know, like this. Right. There's differences in there, which I can't really go in detail because sure. uh, I've been, you know, working so hard and studying. Yeah, no, no problem at all. Stance, yeah. But light performance is a very big issue, and you can show them technically how one performs better than the other. Correct. That's correct. Wow, very cool. So that's clearly one of the most impressive techs that you've been seeing in the diamond industry. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So here's here's the big one. Is a retailer going to make a premium? Are they going to make more profit by having a diamond that has an origin report or not? I would say um, not, not really in a way. 
um, because a lot of people don't see the value uh, of it just yet, maybe in the future. Uh, but it does uh, build a lot of trust in a natural stand, uh, especially the diamond journey. Um, and I've, what I've realized uh, from listening to everybody, all these uh, podcasts and everyone trying to add value to the natural stand, uh, to me, this is the answer. Because having a serene diamond journey, it's already a proof that your diamond is ethically sourced. Uh, because not everyone can have that program, only certain side holders and uh, sure. people that can have. The thing is, I mean, I, I appreciate that you, you are a, a, a strong advocate of Sarin, but the GIA does have its own origin journey, correct? Correct. And I mean, it doesn't have all these other bells and whistles that Sarin has developed, and I yeah. fully respect that. But do you think that if I was to buy two diamonds, would I pay a premium for a GIA certificate origin? And would I be able to charge more or not really? Not, not really, no. It just to, um, I, I don't believe to, to be able to make more profit or to charge more. I really believe it just to, um, you know, to gain more trust uh, from the public. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense because I was having a conversation with Leanne Kemp, um, which is part of this presentation that I've edited in. And that is, how does that um, how does that look to the consumer? And really, Leanne's statement is: this is technology moving forward, really. And just like the web is part of what we do, the concept of origin, the concept of sustainability, the concept of being able to prove, you know, the journey and where it came from and ethically sourced, is going to be just a given. You're not going to have a choice. It's like it's part of what the consumer is going to demand if you want to sell natural diamonds. Does that ring true to you? Yeah, I think so. I think that's where the path is going. Um, and all this actually started because of, um, you know, the growth in the lab grown diamonds. Um, because of that, um, the natural diamonds, um, you know, we, we're doing a lot of hard work to, to add more value purchasing uh, a natural stand, um, especially for the consumers. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was asked recently um, in a discussion whether I thought that uh, lab grown was good for the diamond industry or bad for the diamond industry, right? And my answer was, it was good. And the reason why I said it was good is because it challenged the diamond industry because the diamond industry was actually sitting back and not really doing enough. And this forced it to ramp up its game and, you know, and again, realize that if we don't market and tell our story better, we will, uh, something else will take over our market share. That, that's correct. I agree with you. I think we have to be open-minded and um, I think we need to work harder on, 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 on its way, especially for those people uh, who see the value uh, of the history, um, how the diamonds form, uh, you know, under the ground. And we need to make sure the customers um, understand that and the consumers uh, belief buying a natural stand. Um, that, that's what they're getting. It's a natural stand. Fantastic. Tim, thanks for your time. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Rami. Speak soon. Ciao. Thank you. My own perspective is that blockchain is not really about technology when you're talking to the consumer. It's about telling a better story that you can now actually back up with facts. You know, we heard comments about building trust. It's like creating interactive layers. Leanne talked about how we're in the middle of a trust blast and that technology can help us. What blockchain is doing is creating a trusted mechanism for our trade. I think one of the most powerful statements is that we can bring the value creation of our industry to align with those of our customers. And it's something we have to do. We're too used to telling them something and they're just supposed to believe it. I personally believe that incorporating the latest technology, which blockchain is just one component, and there are a multitude of ones, will enable value. As Tim said, he may not make more money from a origin report or a journey report, but it's critical component because it is building trust. And again, reiterating a comment by Leanne, 
This will allow the preservation of value. And value is something that we don't talk enough about in our trade, and it is sorely missing. I hope you got as much enjoyment out of this as I did. Thanks for watching.